The butternut squash, you can roast or bake it, boil or puree it, steam or saute it. You can even fry it up. Mwah. Let's start by making crispy sage. Add a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil to a pan on medium to high heat. Add two tablespoons of unsalted butter and pick as many sage leaves as you like. I have 12 for this recipe, ranging in different sizes. And when the oil is hot, toss in your sage leaves, but in small batches and keep an eye on them as they can fry up quick. Give them a quick flip and then add to a plate lined with paper towel. These took about 90 seconds for me. Don't forget to season the freshly fried and crispy sage leaves with some salt and then just set aside. Make extra because you can snack on these while you're cooking. Also, we're going to use this same oil to coat our butternut squash after, so don't throw this away. Next, let's toast up some pine nuts in a dry hot pan on medium to high heat. I have about 30 grams just under a quarter cup here and shake the nuts around until they're nicely browned and toasty. If pine nuts aren't your thing, toasted hazelnuts is a great substitute. And then just set aside. Next, grab a large bowl and fill it with water. This is an easy, no mess way to get the pomegranate arrows out of the pithy parts. Slice a pomegranate in half and submerge it into the bowl with the water. I should have used a bigger bowl. And when picking pomegranate, it should be heavy and firm to touch and a nice dark red color will definitely help indicate good quality. With your hands, just break apart and remove the arrows away from the pithy parts. They will sink to the bottom of the bowl and the white pithy parts will float. Just remove the little floaties with your hand or a strainer, and then you'll be left with fresh pomegranate arrows. You'll only need about 40 grams or just under a quarter cup for this recipe, so the rest you can eat as well while you cook. Don't forget to drain and set them aside. All right, it's squash time. This little squash is just over two and a half pounds. Cut off both ends of the squash and grab a peeler and peel the squash skin until you see the beautiful orange color. Might take a while, your arm might hurt, so give this task to someone else. Don't throw away all that squash skin because you can use it for stock. Place the squash upright and slice right down the middle. Scoop out the flesh and the seeds. You can use the flesh for stock or soup and roast up the seeds to eat if you like, or you can even use for garnish for this recipe. Next, just slice up the squash into about one inch thick cubes or however you like. Just make sure that they're all uniform and then just place in a large bowl. And then season with salt, freshly cracked pepper and chili flakes for some hot, hot heat. And then add the sage infused oil and butter, about three to four tablespoons, just enough to coat all the squash cubes perfectly. Grab a large sheet pan, lay down some parchment paper and add the butternut squash and space out all the cubes the best you can. And then we're gonna place in the oven at 425 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven. Give the cubes a shake, flip or toss halfway through cooking. Then when the squash is just about done, maybe like the last five minutes, take them out, finely grate a nice little snowfall of Parmigiano Reggiano all over and place back in the oven to melt and crisp up. Now that our squash is all done and nicely browned and a bit crispy, we also have some nice little crispy Parmigiano Reggiano skirts on the cubes as well. And now we can plate. Add the squash to a bowl or a plate. Grab all that crispy sage and crumble and mash it all up and place all over the squash. You can even place some full small sage leaves all over as well for garnish. Then we're gonna garnish with the toasted pine nuts all over and of course the fresh pomegranate arrows and finish with a little drizzle of balsamic glaze and please bring that to the table. All right, so not only does this dish look amazing when you bring it to the table, it tastes pretty damn good too. I'm uh, pretty happy with this one. And you know, you get all the flavors, the salty, the sweet, the savory, the juicy, the everything. So I hope you give it a go. And as always, the full recipes in the description below. Please like and comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, ciao. Ooh, I got a sage leaf, big one.